So I want to make these um, these brick wall panels for the scene that I'm doing, and uh, I think I'm going to start with like those preformed um, panels that you can get at like Lowe's and Home Depot. You know, they're like stamped with the bricks and they're like painted red and everything. Um, but I wanted to be a lot more distressed than that. And I kind of know the techniques of, of how to do it. And I know I can go on to YouTube and do a bunch of searching around um, to try and find different tutorials or whatever. But um, I think for this, uh, it's going to be a lot easier if I just go straight to the professional. So let's make a phone call. Hey, Siri. Go ahead. Call Hauntzilla. Calling Hauntzilla Mobile. Hello. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Oh, you know, the normal consular kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> Working on this and that. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> What's up with you? Oh, I am frantically working on Halloween stuff the Friday before, you know. Of course. Of course. So, um, which is why I'm calling. I need your help. Okay. What's up? So... You know those um, those preformed uh, brick panels you can get at like Lowe's and Home Depot. Uh huh. Have you ever messed around with like um, distressing those and making them look old, more real, weathered, and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Cool. Um, how how do I go about doing that? <laughs> okay. Um, so, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Really? Okay. So I, I think yeah, I need, yeah. I want like three panels, like side by side by side. And uh -huh. um, that's what my zombies are going to be bolted to. Um, but I just want them to look more than just like the, the crappy red paint that they slap on those things. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So what I have done in the past is um, super easy kind of stuff. So firstly, what you're going to want to do is get just a, a sponge. Usually, like if you go into the cleaning department at Home Depot or Lowe's, they have these really big yellow sponges that uh -huh. you like wash your car with. Right. You're going to want to get one of those, and you're going and um, you're going to cut it to the shape and size of the individual bricks that are on your panels. So um, because it's such a dense foam, you might want to use like a, a cookie, a uh, cookie, a turkey cutter. Or something like that, electric knife right. to kind of cut through it or, or whatever. But you're going to cut it to that shape. Now, um, what essentially you're going to do is stamp on another color on top of the color that is on your panels. Okay. Um, and so I don't have to, to like using your color. I don't have to like prime it or anything. Just just go right over top of that red stuff. Yeah, just go right over top of it. I use, like, uh, house paints and stuff. Um, you can use permanent acrylic paint, um, but you definitely want to make sure it's, like, not the kid acrylic paint because that stuff will bleed with water. You want, like, stuff that, like, can hold up to weather. Gotcha. Um, and, um, and then when it comes to, like, choosing your brick color, it all is, like, a matter of preference. So um, I've done crap ton of research on like bricks because I absolutely love bricks and different parts of the country have different uh, colors that they primarily primarily use so like up north you're going to see more brick buildings that have like more solid one color and it's usually a deep red or something like that but here in Texas and a lot of the southern places you're going to see like three or four colors yeah. Um, so I like the I like the multiple colors. It just to me I think it adds more depth and dimension. So um, so like I would suggest uh, choosing whichever one your favorite. Either choose the southern way of like three or four colors. I think I'd like and that. And if you do yeah. that, yeah. If you do that, and I, I I don't shy away from doing a light color. So I like to go from dark to light. So like having like a dark brick red and a dark brown and having also like a whitish color like a tan color because that's a really popular color also down here but anyway four colors you're going to use your sponge and you're going to literally just stamp 
it onto your brick. So in some cases, it's not going to cover all of your brick there, and that's okay. You want that, so that adds that two dimension to it. Gotcha. So you're going to do all of that. Let it dry. Um, go over to the um, uh, like the brick section of your uh, store there where it has all of the uh, mortar and cement and all of that kind of stuff, and you'll find that they have mortar in tubes for your cock gun. Gotcha. Okay. And you're going to want to use that. And probably for three panels, I would think you might need two or three tubes. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to bead, a thin bead of that all throughout your mortar, and then you just use your finger and spread it, so that it creates more of that realistic kind of uh, mortar in between the bricks there. So let me ask you. So, so you let that dry. So uh, let me ask you. So um, I noticed at Lowe's and Home Depot, they got uh, Lowe's has like um, the panels with the black grout or mortar, uh -huh. and then the Home Depot right. has like um, the same thing but gray. Doesn't matter which one uh -huh. or what. It doesn't really matter, but I will tell you that if it was me, I would go with the one with the black. And the reason why is because when you when you bead that mortar on and you use your finger, you're there's going to be like holes and stuff. This isn't supposed to be perfectly smooth or anything like that. And so when you have like these little gaping holes here and there, that black is actually going to create the illusion of a hole or depth that gives that more of like a rotted kind of look. Um, gotcha. You know, whenever I did my classes or whatever, I always preached that there's no such thing as black in nature. Black is actually the absence of light. So when you have black in there, it's making the illusion that this is a deep hole and not a, you know, two-dimensional flat piece of wood. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Or a piece of plastic or whatever. Right, right. So that would be my question would be do the black that way you have this illusion of um so yeah um once you've done all of that again this is a preference thing um i would jump on the googles and look up old brick um and look at the different pictures because what you'll see is that really really old brick has like this white what looks like plaster on it i don't know if that's because like with it being super old that maybe something was built over it that did have like a plaster and then the plaster came off or or whatever but you'll yeah. see a lot of old old pictures of old bricks that have like this plaster and it's actually a really easy um effect to get so you just use uh drywall compound um right the same stuff that you'd use for like monster mud oh yeah yeah and yeah, you can grab some. And don't I wouldn't get the whole five gallon unless you're thinking about doing something more with it. But you can get a smaller, you can get a smaller like I think it comes like in a box or whatever. Gotcha. Anyway, use a use a um, uh, you know what a skip trowel is? Kind of, uh, no, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> no, I. Your a skip trial is like this effect where it it um, I can't re I don't know the actual name of the tool, but it's a flat piece of metal essentially, and you put the mud on it, and then you scrape it onto a wall, and it just kind of skips along and creates this really nice kind of uh, texture. They, they use it a lot in decorative, you know, uh, walls when you're trying to do um, that plaster look or. Um, uh, the, the name escapes me now, but anyway, it's it's like that Venetian kind of look. Gotcha. Um, so I'm so not essentially. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not like covering the entire brick, just basically like scraping it over there, so the color still shows through a bit. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. You're just putting on a little bit of it um, to to kind of create that like small layer, but you don't want to completely slather it. This isn't peanut butter. Right. <laughs> 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 we don't want to do peanut butter. Um, so you'll just do that and just, you know, create this really nice illusion. And when it comes to doing this, like, you don't put too much thought into it. Because if you put too much thought into it, then you're going to start nitpicking and trying to perfect it. Right. And what you're trying to actually achieve is something that is completely 
not perfect. Gotcha. So there's no such thing as a mistake because, you know, aging things don't age uniformly. They don't, they don't wear evenly. And so you really just want to kind of slap it up there and just be like, there we go. You know, just right. don't put too much thought into it. Um, once that's all dry and you're all done with that, then comes the really fun part, which is the distressing. Um, and I always have like three colors in my little Zep spray bottle of paint. So you're going to have watered down paint, which is about 50 to 50, um, or one to one ratio of like a really, really dark brown, okay. um, watered down. And then I also have like a green, a okay. dark kind of olivey green. Okay. And then I will sometimes do like a yellowy kind of color, but I, you might not even need the yellow. I would just do the brown and the green. Gotcha. Um, and the first thing you'll do is start with the brown and you're going to want to spray the whole entire board and have like a bunch of rags and kind of rag it off. And what you're, what's that going to achieve is a really nice look of like dirt and grime and agent, you know, years and years and years of dust and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be kind of that look that you're creating. So again, don't have to be super perfect if it's, heavier brown in some areas than others, it's totally okay. You're just going to, that's why I want you to use a loose old rag right. because it's going to be uneven and you're just going to kind of tap or dab rag off. I think there's a video of me where I was doing this effect at an escape room. I was distressing their walls and it's just me going tap, 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 tap. And I literally spent five hours just tap, tap, tapping the wall. <laughs> so do I need to, do I need to have my panel standing up or laying flat or does it matter? It doesn't matter. Um, I would I would say it's probably easier to have them standing up. That way you're not bending over it. Gotcha. Um, plus, wherever you may miss, there'll be some kind of drippage, and you want that drippage. Because gotcha. essentially what you're mimicking is water damage. Right. Okay. Um, and then the, with the green, the green in your mind is mildew. So where is there on your panels where has there been a lot of water damage that would have caused mildew and essentially you're just kind of going to do the same thing just spray it on let it drip if you get these long stringy kind of lines use your rag to dab it or 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 hit it again like with some just regular water to disperse that stringy line because drips don't normally happen in long streamy lines. Right. I'm not saying they never happen, but they don't normally happen like that. So anyway, that's cool. it. That's it? That's it. Well, that sounds like a piece of cake. Well, yeah, cool. it's going to be fun. Except, I have to warn you, the grouting's going to suck. <laughs> that does sound like it's going to take a long time. <laughs> whatever you think it's going to take, however long you think it's going to take, Times it by three. <laughs> it's going to take a long time. Awesome. Well, but other than that, it's going to be super fun. Oh, cool. Well, I'm heading over to Lowe's then now to start picking up this stuff. So I knew I'd be able to call you and uh, and uh, go straight to the source. So I appreciate oh, thank it. You. You're very welcome. I can't wait to see it all finished. It's, it's up. You do such great work, and I mean, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Well, I'll send you some pictures. Please do. Okay. All right. If you, have, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate. All right. Give me a ring. Awesome. We'll do it. Thanks, Melissa. Okay. All right. We'll see Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So how easy was that? All right, guys, just a couple quick uh, little things to add on. Um, the sponge that I use, I actually found at my local Ace Hardware, and this sponge is the exact size of these bricks, so that worked out really, really well. So all I had to do was just cut my um, four pieces, and um, I was good to go. So uh, Ace Hardware, if you happen to have one of those in your town, um, that worked out really good. Uh, you might also notice that the grout that I used was different than what I pulled off the shelf at Lowe's. Um, that's because the first time I went to Lowe's and uh, got my materials, I was not in the concrete section. I was over in the tile and grout section, and I picked up the um, this grout caulk 
which uh, it's sanded, it works just as well. It's, you still get the texture and it feels like, like mortar and everything. Um, this stuff is over $8 a tube. The stuff that Melissa suggested getting is less than four. Um, that was just my mistake. I was just in the wrong section of Lowe's uh, when I got this stuff. So um, in hindsight, I would've got the other stuff for four bucks a tube as opposed to this, which was twice as much, but worked just as well. And I used uh, silver. Uh, was the color that I used. So there's that. Um, what else? Oh, the um, plates, the steel plates that you saw there. Um, I just made those out of, you know, EVA foam, the floor mat foam from uh, Harbor Freight. And I also did, um, I cast some bolts um, in clay uh, and then just poured them with some uh, plastic resin. And if you guys are interested on how to make those steel plates and doing this, let me know and uh, I can make a, a video for that later so um and i think that's pretty much it you did i did also use uh black as in, uh, in addition to the brown and the green um to get the uh the really black mildewy mold effect so that's it guys i hope this was helpful big thanks to uh, melissa for helping me out with that uh i knew that she had the answers um and the knowledge of how to do that and uh hope you guys enjoyed it got any questions leave them in the comments and we'll talk to you later see ya There's one more thing I forgot. So if you have multiple panels that are going next to each other, when you're stamping your paints, make sure that the bricks on the next uh, panel adjacent to it matches. Um, that way, when you go down the wall, everything looks uniform and the, you don't have these weird half-colored bricks uh, and it really makes the, um, the seams go away. So um, yeah, just another quick little tip.